What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking out Kepler. We checked this one out when it came out and it's 1.0 about a year and a half ago, a year ago. I don't know specifically what the date was, but anyways, the developers have continued to update it and add things to it. They just published a post 1.0 release map that includes everything up to and including like open modding and things of that nature. And so anyways, I figured it was probably time for us to dive back on into the game now that the developers have said that they're dedicating to actually releasing a whole bunch of post 1.0 things on in. If you've never seen Keplerth before, Keplerth is a open world sandbox survivally RPG where you are a character that's been marooned by a space crash and you've got to fight all kinds of bosses. The best thing I can probably compare it to is something like Terraria. Uh, Terraria, I think, is actually a really, really good reference point because this is almost exactly like Terraria, just from a different perspective. You fight bosses, that gives you access to, like, the next workbench, which allows you to get the new thing that mines the thing. Lots and lots of gated progression and things you have to knock out in order to get a little bit further. And so, that's what Keplerth is firing on. The game has it all wrapped up inside of, like, a RimWorld aesthetic. But there's a lot of stuff here that I think people may not be aware of. I mean, there's farming, there's crafting, there's building your own village... And and having people like move in and running your own shop and there's dungeon diving and boss fighting and gene editing and you know ranching there's all kinds of stuff in this game it's actually got a lot of things going on so let's dive on in and play uh, after watching this video, you wanted to get the game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also take a look down there if you wanted to check out my Discord and my Twitch stream and hang out. So for the purposes of this video, I've actually played about four to five hours into the game because the last couple times that we covered the game, uh, we mostly were just kind of taking it from the top. You guys have already seen that, and if you haven't, go back and watch the previous videos because those things largely have not changed the early game. But for right now, I'm about four or five hours on into the game. I'm playing an orc warrior. I've got like a bow that has no arrows, apparently. I ran out of ammo, and I've got this big magic sword that I got from a boss that I can crush stuff in the face with. But the first thing you're going to notice is that the game is very, very, very inspired by RimWorld. It looks a lot like RimWorld, but the difference here is, is that it's kind of Terraria from a RimWorld perspective. So so this is a game that's about diving down into this dungeon right here. There's an overworld, as you can see, and it's procedurally generated. As you run around and kill enemies, every single like set of floors or like every single biome is going to have its own sort of antagonist. So the surface level is the infestors, which are basically like zombies. Uh, the second level down, when you go down a couple floors, that's going to be the goblin domain. And then when you go a few more layers down from that, it's the bug domain. And as you go through these places, there's going to be bosses, there's going to be cities, there's going to be random treasures and things you can find along the way to make your character stronger, up to and including like ores and metals and things you can use to craft. If you've played Terraria, you know exactly the crafting loop that I'm talking about. So for right now, the things that I need to get done, uh, this is my base up here, actually. This is where I live at. I've built this up a little bit. I've got various workbenches around. I've got light sources. I've got chemistry benches. I've got cooking stations. All kinds of things that you can do here. But I've set up this little area up here because I wanted to make like a chicken farm actually is what I was interested in. So what I need to do for right now is I need to first and foremost, I need to smack down this bear that's right next to my base. He's barely far enough away for me to not worry about him. So I'm going to smack him up a bit. The other thing that I need is actually to level up my... Is that an infestor? That's an inf That's a zombie. Hold on. I'll kill him off real quick. He dropped a map that'll tell us where an infested village is. On every single floor, when you kill the enemy... The main enemy type, so like infestors on this floor, or when you go down below, you kill goblins. Uh, every single one of them has a chance that they'll drop a map that'll take you to one of their villages, and it'll just mark it on the map, and you can go there. Those tend to be areas that have very, very high... Uh, densities of that enemy type so that you can get more of the specialized crafting materials you need to move along with that particular tier of crafting. I'm also hungry, so if you take a look up in the top left-hand corner, we've got our HP, we've got our hunger, and we've got our energy. We've also got our ion skin up here. Ion skin is a stat that you build up as you level up. And speaking of level ups, this game has a very, very unique way that it allows the player to level up. Uh, it's basically got gene editing, so this entire grid over here are skills and knowledge. 
And every time you kill an enemy, every single enemy in this game has like two or three genetic items they can drop. And when you have enough of them, you can basically customize your character by analyzing those genes and then splicing them on in. The genes themselves, they have like Diablo style set bonuses. If they have like a similar icon, they take up different spaces. And building your character be like the most badass melee warrior or the best archer or like the best wizard or whatever it is that you want to do uh, is a major part of the game. And in fact, this is a very, very robust system that has loads and loads and loads of things that you can unlock of varying tiers, sizes. Like, it's still going right here. Like, there are a huge amount of things uh, from support genes to, like, main fighting genes that you can slot on in in order to make your character more powerful. And, in fact, you are going to have to. But what I was saying was I wanted to level up my horse real fast uh, because I actually raised this horse from a little tiny sprout but I need to make, let's see here, a gene editing agent. That's going to allow me to level up my horse by right-clicking on him, and then I can go to manage and raise level, and boom, boom, boom. My horse is now, I need a two to three editing agent, but I don't have the fusion pool yet. Either way, that made my horse a little bit faster. It made him a little bit more defended, and it gave him, like, double HP. So I'm totally okay with that. What I want to do for right now is off to the west of me... Well, there used to be. I don't know. There was a village off to the west of me that had, like, a, a ranching supply. But I've had weird situations with this before where, like, the map seems to kind of, like, change on me a little bit. There's a farmer up there. But the last time I played, over here to the left, there was a human village where there was a ranch supply place. I guess I'll go north. I don't know. Like I said, sometimes the map seems to change on me, even though you have a dedicated seed that you select at the beginning of the game. And I haven't been able to figure out exactly why it changes on me. I think it has something to do with the Steam cloud saves. Uh, because whenever I load my game on a different computer like in the living room or like a laptop or something like that, the map seems to have changed in little like tiny imperceptible ways until you're looking for something specific. But I can't like prove it. But I do know that there was a village to the west of me when I was playing last night, and now there is no longer a village to the west of me. So anyways, something weird happens with the steam saves being loaded would be my guess. But there's a village up here, so hopefully it'll be okay. And we got some weird iguana monster right there that's got to go. There's a farming supply lady. That's not really what I need. I need a ranching supply person more than anything else. It looks like there's a mining supply guy over here. Let's go ahead and wipe out these bears real quick. Honestly, I'm outclassing everything on this floor. There we go. After riding around for a little bit, I finally found a beast supplier. Uh, so there's going to be various shops all over the map. You can buy farming implements, mining tools, you can get new pets. And I wanted to get some chickens. We got some baby cows over here. There's a baby horse. What else do you have? Two baby horses. A baby goat. I'll take the goat and I'll take the cow. I don't think that those two things go together. Like I don't think we're going to be able to make like a coat or like a, a gal, but we're going to try our best. Uh, it looks like we've actually got a teleporter over here, which is kind of strange as well. I didn't know that there was multiples of these. I'm going to break open these crates for the cash real quick. There's also a safe right here. It's got circuit boards, some bullets. I still haven't gotten around to gunsmithing because I haven't really found any sulfur or anything yet. So in activating that, activate and save this portal. Yeah, what does it do? Uh, it looks like... I can actually rename this, and I will rename this, I think. Uh, we will call this Animal Supplier Village. There we go. Well, Villager, that's fine. That R was a fat finger, but I'll take it. Uh, I need to go back to my base. That actually saves me a whole bunch of time. That's a really, really nice thing to find right there. And then once we're ready to release our little critters, which I have inside these boxes over here, we can put them inside this little tiny pen. And unfortunately, I think the goat and I think the cow are going to have to, like, share the area. But there they are. They can be friends, dude. They're both herd animals. I'm sure they will get along perfectly fine. Like, goats and cows, they seem like they probably get along. They both like headbutting. They both like lackadaisically wandering around and eating grass. Uh, but over time, this pen is going to fill up with animals. And so I need them because the meat that we collect from various creatures on this planet, 
it's tainted. So, like, if I get meat from, like, any of the boars or any of that kind of stuff around here, it's bad for me. Like, it kind of makes you sick, even though it fills up your satiation. And so I need to get a farm going that'll allow me to keep my hunger meter nice and filled up without always having a bunch of secondary effects that kind of, like, beat up my character. From there, I think we need to go underground because I wanted to make a new set of goblin armor. I've got a little bit of iron right now and a little bit of goblin plate mail. But I wanted to finish off the remainder of the goblins set. And so I'd like to take a look and see what that's going to cost me. So there's a goblin bone sword. It looks like that does 30 damage. That's less than what our sword does right now, so I'm probably not going to need that. However, it does look like there is goblin steel. So if I could pick up the gloves for the goblin steel, and I could pick up the boots for the goblin steel as well... That would more than likely boost up my defense by almost double, it looks like. Yeah, so it would add, well, not double, but by like four. And that would actually be pretty good because I've gone down to the deeper floors of the dungeon and I got beat up pretty good. So I think what we do for right now is let's go down and we will grab some goblin goodies from the lower levels. This game does have Z levels and you kind of just dig downwards where you want to go. And we will see what sort of trouble we can get into. This floor is going to be annoying. Those things are spore spawners. I don't feel like dealing with them. All right, we'll come back over this way. I've got a flashlight equipped. That's going to allow me to see in the dark a little bit. We'll wipe out a couple of critters down here. We'll collect some of the goodies. I need a bunch of monster skins anyways. That way I can make a whole bunch of leather. And what we're looking out for right now is we're looking out for, like, really anything that has... Oh, he spit at me. We're looking for anything that has sulfur. Uh, we're looking for anything that has iron. So there's some iron right there. I can go ahead and mine that way because it'll make my life easier. I don't know if that guy right there is going to aggro. He is going to aggro. Okay, we'll go slay him real fast. And then we'll continue mining out all this iron. Getting the goodies. And as you can see, the game has, like, very, very relaxing, cozy Terraria vibes. Like, that's really what the game reminds me of. It's like Terraria inside of a RimWorld trench coat it is really the way that I think about the game mentally. But there's all kinds of fun stuff in here. I mean, there's super abilities. There's machine guns. There's all kinds of, like, technology and things that you can equip. There's loads and loads of pets and things to collect. Like, there is just a huge amount of content here what it really comes down to is whether or not you're kind of like the collecty sort of individual like if you're the kind of person that makes a whole bunch of weapon racks in your base and makes a whole bunch of like armor stands and every single one of those has like every single set in the game and you just kind of enjoy like collating collecting things this is a game that i think is absolutely going to get under your skin if you're not into the whole collect-a-thon and you're more progression focused. There is a lot of stuff to do here, but the core gameplay loop may get a little bit boring because really what ultimately happens is you beat a boss. It'll give you a new workbench. That new workbench will give you like a syringe and a new tier of gear. And then you use that to go down to the next layer and you just kind of keep repeating that for five or six bosses straight. There are little side bosses and things that you are going to want to farm in order to get all their genetic material to get, like, the unlocks there, too, uh, for your level ups and your, your gene pool. But, like, it's not, like, required. You don't, like, have to do it. Ooh, loot goblin. Hold on. Yep, we about to get this dude. He's about to drop some loot. There we go. Uh, the main reason I kill those guys right there is because they drop a piece of loot. Break that. There we go. I want that to go away. That thing's spitting out spores and I'm getting poisoned. Uh, the reason I like killing those loot goblins is because they drop... Where is it? They drop rifter stones. Uh, what rifter stones are is they're hearthstones. They allow you to teleport back home to your spawn point from wherever you might be. And so anyways, very, very useful stuff. Very, very helpful things. Ooh, there's a goblin lair over here. Let's invade them through the walls like a sapper. I am an orc, and an orc is superior to a goblin. There we go. Just wipe them all out. Perfect. I will break all that down. You may notice that we're picking up Tenergy Shards. Uh, what are Tenergy Shards, you might be asking? Tenergy Shards are the currency du jour of the day. And so anyways, there's going to be a bunch of shops all over the map, just like the place that we bought the pets from, uh, that you can spend your money on cosmetics, you can spend your money on weapons, you can spend it on fishing lures, there's really no shortage in the amount of things that you can spend your money on in this game. Hey, 
Don't spit on me, bro. Uh, I do need to get out of here because I think we have enough leather and I think we maybe have enough iron to get the thing. I didn't realize that I had a stack of iron inside my inventory. So I think I have all the stuff that I'm going to need in order to be successful here. So let's go back and we'll get to like the crafty boy business. And once we made a new suit of armor, I'm going to go down to the next level, which is where the bug people live at. And we're going to see if we can withstand the bug people's area of the map. So if you wanted to see what the crafting system looks like, is the music actually on right now? I was going to say, it feels kind of quiet to me. Anyways, we'll turn the music back on real quick because it was feeling oddly quiet in here. But as you can see, my pets are growing up. We've got cooking over here. You've got to put in the fuel and then the thing that you want to cook. Uh, there's loads and loads of recipes. It only gets more and more complicated the further you get on into the game. We've got smelting and other goodies over here. I haven't really doubled or tripled up yet on any of the crafting workbenches just because I'm feeling kind of lazy and I'm a little bit limited on space and I'm also a little bit limited on fuel so I don't really have enough coal to run everything that we have around here I mean I'm running my entire society off sconces that I stole from down beneath the surface from a bunch of green guys that I murdered violently with a with a machete so we've been on we've been on less lean times if I'm being honest with you so having successfully smithed off some of my goodies over here, my delicious, wondrous goodies, uh, we need to start smithing some new stuff. And so on this side, we can actually get access to goblin steel gloves, which we have the materials for, and the goblin steel shoes. Uh, all of the gears in this game, uh, they all have kind of like stacking bonuses. Unfortunately, goblin steel gives us bonuses to our pet's damage. And we don't really have a pet right now that deals damage because I wanted a pet that was really fast and would allow me to run around a lot more aggressively. So unfortunately, I don't know if it's gonna be that much of a help, but the extra flat defense will be nice if nothing else. And it looks like we've got, well, it looks like we get some damage reflection or something. Yeah, we get a little bit of damage reflection just because we're spiky, so that's pretty cool. And like that, our gear has been set up, so I think it's time for us to go back down to a deeper level and see if I can track down sulfur. That's like the next big thing that I've been looking for, and I don't know exactly where to get it at. This game has a little bit of an exploratory aspect to it in that regard, and none of the ores are really marked on your map uh, when you go down to look for them. And so it can be kind of hard to track them down from time to time. But I haven't seen any. I've been pretty thorough, I think, on the floors down to like minus four. And I haven't seen any sulfur there. So my thinking is maybe it's a little bit deeper down. And the reason I wanted that sulfur is because I actually want to make guns. That's what I'm most excited about. I've had guns in other playthroughs, but guns have eluded me this time around. And so here we are on a deeper, scarier floor. Uh, every four layers or so that you go down, the biome changes. Don't worry about that thing right there. It's called a cuckoo. It's basically like a magic chest. Uh, they're all over the map, and they're all over the underground dungeon. If you put stuff inside them, you can access that stuff from anywhere. And so it's not a bad idea, actually, to fill up a cuckoo with a whole bunch of food and, like, bandages and, like, things that effectively make your character more effective gonna kill whatever the hell that thing is we've also got another critter over here oh he's a spitter good well let's take him out then cavalry doctrine there we go we took him out by circle strafing him is that sulfur right there it is good okay that's exactly what i'm looking for then i need a whole bunch of it so that i can make gunpowder and we can actually ow i've been clawed how dare you sir how dare you you keep your middies off me, all right? Don't touch me unless I give you my express consent and also Force Shoe gives you his consent. I need to find more of that sulfur, so I think we're gonna ride around on this level and just kind of see. Ow, dude, what is that thing? Some kind of goo tiger? Good lord, man. Some kind of booger lion. Ow, dude. So many things down here that wanna harm me. Ow, I'm actually pretty beat up. Okay, I'm gonna use a bandage real fast. I'm thinking it might possibly be a good idea to maybe use ranged weapons down here. These guys are hitting pretty hard. 
and they are tanking a lot of damage considering I'm I've only gone down like two floors from the last boss and I'm using that boss's specific rare drop loot I felt like I would have a little bit more of a leg up than this but I guess not there goes another monster right there uh, you do have your equipment over here on the right hand side and you do have relics one of my relics is a flashlight uh, just because I like being able to see with my eyeballs but we need to find some more sulfur Maybe I'll dig down this way. My pickaxe is about to break. I'm going to have to go back and, like, repair it. It's a little bit unfortunate, but hopefully I'll be able to do something productive. That looks like... I think that's sulfur right there. I think we're going to have to dig through some of this stuff over here to get to it. But that looks like it's going to give me a pretty solid supply of gunpowder. Because not only does this game have medieval weapons like swords and shields and axes and things of that nature, uh, the game goes all the way up the tech tree to like laser cannons and mini guns and all kinds of fun things. That is indeed our sulfur ore. And as you can see, there's an ancient lizard fossil that dropped as well. Uh, basically, every surface in this game and every enemy in this game has a chance to drop a genealogical item like I talked about earlier. And so you're just constantly getting these random drops off of like mining nodes. And you're like constantly getting random drops off of like enemies that you kill and trees that you cut down and crops that you harvest. And all of it leads towards your, your character developing and getting stronger. And I think that's actually a very, very strong core gameplay loop to lead with uh, because it makes you want to kind of memorize where all this stuff comes from and like seek it out little bit of silver ore right there. don't know if there's anything I can do with the silver ore for right now. This loot gremlin might be a huge risk, but I'm going to try to get him. Oh, never mind. We got another, we got another goo lion over there that wants me. He's trying to teleport out, but I'm not going to let it happen, even if it means that I die, because I want his goodies. Give them to me. Uh, even if all I get out of it, wow, I am pretty beat up right now. Give me, yeah, give me, give me a little bit of a heal for my bandages, please. Luckily, there's not really any damage on touch in this game, so you don't have to worry about that too much. I'm still poisoned, but I want this sulfur down here. Ugh, another goo tiger, man. There are weapons that have different animations. Uh, so, for example, in the early game, I was running spears. Uh, because spears, they actually extend out your reach by a lot. And I found that the spear would sometimes get, like, double damage or triple damage as the enemy moved forward. You kind of get, like, a, a double registering or, like, a triple registering hit that was really nice. There's a treasure room right here. What's inside the treasure room? Whole bunch of money... Yeah, it sounds good to me. Whole bunch of money and torches, and then I think we teleport out of here. Now that I found the sulfur that I was looking for, I may summon, like, a mini-boss while we're down here. I think I have an extra mini-boss summoning item for a boss that I haven't seen yet and I haven't fought yet. And so maybe I'll crack one of those open, too, before we finish out the actual episode itself, just so you can see what a boss fight looks like. Because that might... Hey, they growed up, dude. Dude, those are the beefiest... Look how buff that goat is, dude. That cow and that that goat are, like, on the creatine or something, man. They've definitely been getting their supplements. Like, they've had some kind of help. Cuckoo jelly. Yeah, I think that's the one that summons a boss. So I may do that. I, I think that our animals are getting some kind of supplementary help that none of them will admit to that are giving them some sort of, like, performance-enhancing superiority that other animals are not getting. But I'd like to... Did I pick up any more iron ore around? I thought I did. I guess that I didn't. Which is the opposite of did. So I'll just use this iron over here, I think, to maybe make some arrows. Because I don't really have many arrows left. And I'd like to use my bow that fires three arrows at a time. Because it's actually pretty good. See what I mean? Like, it's a pretty fun bow right there. Especially if you can manage to stack up some serious attack speed. Like, it'll get rid of some foes. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to investigate gunpowder real fast. And see if maybe gunpowder was inside. So we've got a plating pool right there. Used for metal plating to strengthen equipment. I don't... It's a decoration... It looks kind of gross. Like, what does it do? 
let's see here. The better the metal is that you use in your plating, the better the attributes that will be attached. All right, so like if I put an armor right there, so metal bar plus a Parasitor Primordium. It looks like that added four mods. So it looks like our weapon now has, so we've got a 20% attack speed inc or 10% attack speed increase, durability up by 60%, defense up by four, uh, reduced damage from range attack by 20%. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I can probably live with that. What is this one gonna do for me? Slower durability loss and reduced damage flat by 12%, gathering speed, defense up, okay. I was actually unaware of the plating system. But now I'm aware of the play. Ooh, movement speed 10%. Nice, dude. I had no idea that this was even a system that was in the game. I hadn't seen it yet. I thought it was, it said it was a decorative item. I thought it was a decorative item, not a crafting area. Uh, but I need a gunpowder. And I don't know exactly where to get the gunpowder from. I remember seeing it around here, but I don't recall where. Ah, the firearm workbench would more than likely be the spot. Alas, I don't have any iron left. So I think we're going to have to track down some iron before that becomes useful. Really, really stoked about that upgrade system right there. That actually gives you a whole lot of reasons to refarm the same equipment. Like, I don't know if you can plate it twice and just replace the old bonuses, but I like that a lot, actually. I could see myself dropping a lot of time into that, trying to get the perfect stats out. Oh yeah, I was gonna summon a boss for you too. Let me drag him away from my base though, because I don't want my base to get destroyed. We'll go over here. Okay. Oh God, okay. Can I, like, hurt him? What am I doing here? I don't know exactly how this is playing out. Oh, we gotta, like, okay. I think I, I think I get it. Ah, I think we gotta damage him with his own... Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, we gotta hit his own boogers back at him, and that'll make him... Oh, dude, I was gonna use that one. Come on. Uh, we gotta hit his own boogers back at him. That will then make him corporeal, and then we'll be able to damage him. Ow. Okay. We'll knock that into you. Just get a little more damage off. I don't know if it's going to be enough to kill him. One thing I do like is that the bosses do have, like, strategies and things. Like, different bosses have different abilities. It's more or less just like Terraria. Like, if you can reasonably well expect a boss to have kind of like a fight strategy in Terraria, you can kind of expect it here, too. So what does he drop? The Doll Cuckoo. Okay. What does the cuckoo doll do? Summon a friendly cuckoo, but it vanishes after one minute. Is it like a consumable? Oh, it's on a cooldown. Oh, nice, dude. So that allows me to summon a cuckoo bank no matter where I am. Nice, dude. That's actually like super helpful. That gives me like a universal storage that I can summon at any time in any dungeon wherever I am. Nice, dude. That eliminates so much random running back to base to complete things. It makes me very, very happy. Uh, let me go ahead. I got to fix my gear, too. There's a robot down south of here where I got to fix my pickaxe real fast. Take my pickaxe and repair it. There we go. Pickaxe has been repaired. Looking good. For a second, it was, so, it was showing like Chinese or something on my pickaxe. I don't know exactly why, but it seems to have gone away when I repaired it. Uh, I know where iron is at, though. We need, if we want to make an iron, how hard is it to make a silver workbench, though? So the simple silver workbench, we can knock that out right now. Uh, basically, every single element in this game, or every single, I guess, material, has its own workbench. Uh, what this means is you're going to be eating up a lot of space in your base for, like, random sort of redundant workbenches that only allow you to really, like, craft the next tier up like silver anvils, silver stoves. As you upgrade these, they do get better stuff. But me being a little bit of a collectaholic, I kind of want to have one of all of them, like side by side so that I can chart my progression. It's probably a terrible idea, but I find myself wanting to do it nonetheless. Still, we need to go down beneath the surface. I also need to eat some food. I'm actually pretty hungry right now. 
There we go. Fill up my satiation. And then we need to go get some iron. That way. I mean, I guess I could just beeline for silver. And we could make the silver crafting work. But the iron is kind of like behind us now. So maybe we go for silver instead by going down a few more floors. I'm not like hugely in love with this layout right here. Maybe I'll go down another floor with my stairs. There we go. Yeah, I like this a little bit better because this means that I'm like kind of protected. Oh, dude, that's super bad. I don't like that at all. He burrowed in on me. I'm going to see if I can find anything useful here. But we're mostly looking for silver, I guess. I'll pick up sulfur like when and where I see it, but silver is like our main thing that we want. What did that do? Oh, he weakened my defense? Okay. Okay, yeah, he's throwing his boogers at me. Fair. I do wish that the enemies had a little bit more of like a health bar that was easier to see. Like, the bosses have a health bar, but, like, the normal mobs do not. Which didn't really matter when most of the mobs were, like, one and two shottable. But now that I'm hitting them, like, five and six times, I'd like to know what their health is at. Maybe there's an option that I just didn't turn on. I don't see an option, but anyways. Ooh, we found a little treasure lair. Okay, free apples. I like it. I like it. What else you got in here for me? A little bit of money. Free treasure chest. What's the treasure chest got? First aid kit, copper bar, iron bar, a little bit of sulfur. Okay, there were some goodies in there. I don't know what a fusion crystal is. An important material that is used for increasing the gear point of armor. So I'm guessing it's useful for some kind of customization like the plating that we just did. But yeah, this is Kepler. I think this game is absolutely fantastic. If you can get over the fact that the game's art style is not that unique when compared to, like, RimWorld, if that doesn't bother you too much, I feel like you're going to find a lot of things to enjoy here with this game. Like, the, the only question you really have to answer is, did you enjoy Terraria? If you enjoyed Terraria, but you do not feel like platforming and jumping around and using hook shots, uh, if you wanted just like a Terraria that's more of a dungeon crawler without all the platforming, and you still get to find treasures, and there's still a huge amount of depth and a huge amount of things to do, uh, Keplerth is honestly not a bad choice in that realm. The game looks good, it's got a very pleasing color palette, it's got solid impacts, it's got nice combat, it's got loads and loads of gear variety and things to find and unlock and random drops, it's got tremendously, tremendously customizable character growth through the gene editing system over here when it comes to the RPG elements of the game. And so anyways, this is a really, really fantastic choice. I think the game is great. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out Kaplarth, which sounds like a, it sounds like a noise you would make when somebody hits you in the stomach, but it's not, I promise. It's a video game. I'll catch you all later. Bye, folks.